Hello my loves, Tony here from TO Yarn Crafts and welcome back to my channel and welcome to a very special yarn snob review. Today we are checking out the metal Tunisian crochet hooks from Sorella. Now these are very special hooks so I've got a very special video for you today. Not only are we only reviewing these hooks but also I solicited questions from my friends on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram to see what you wanted to know about this product. Now I'm surely going to give my two cents because I definitely have thoughts but I want to make sure I get to all of your questions as well. I'm super excited to get down on this review, but first let me kick it over to voiceover Tony for a note from today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is a learning platform for all things creative. Whether you're a self-taught learner, a career changer, or an expert side hustler, Skillshare has the classes to get you closer to your goals. And speaking of goals, one of mine is to progress even further with my YouTube channel to bring you the content you want with that special Tony flair. And to do that, I had to go to the source. Ali Abdal, who is a former doctor that quit medicine to do YouTube full time. True story. Now, unlike his channel, which has nearly 4 million subscribers and covers wellness and productivity strategies, Ali's Skillshare class covers the absolute basics of starting a career on YouTube. I was glad to see him cover all of the tech that it takes, but I was even more impressed by the way Ali tackles some of those intangibles that come with creating content. He touches on how to come up with your ideas, overcoming the fear of just getting started and even battling perfectionism. He hits on the head and the heart of becoming an authentic creator. His passion and authority over the topic that he speaks is so inspiring and I find myself feeling that way every time I take another Skillshare class. Skillshare is a truly invaluable resource for sparking your curiosity and reigniting the flames of your imagination. And now is the best time to invest in yourself with a Skillshare membership. Skillshare has been kind enough to offer a risk-free 30-day trial to the TLYC audience. Find a link down in my description and sign up now. I know I talk about them a lot, but I love having Skillshare as a sponsor. The idea of trying out new crafts, building new skills is super duper important to me and I hope that you'll give them a try. And I'm also super grateful for all of you. Thank you for everyone who left kind notes on my last video about Mr. Peanut Butter. By the time this video airs, his dental surgery will be tomorrow, so fingers crossed it all goes well. Now you know we can't start a video without some love for our cup of caffeine sponsor. Today I am sticking with water. I don't know what it is but we got an ice storm out here and I'm just completely dried out so it is hydrate, hydrate, hydrate for me. That's it. So this cup of sparkling water with a little bit of lime is brought to you by our friend Sandy and when donating Sandy said thank you for the sunshine and love you send out to all the makers out there from newbies to experience. You give me joy and a reason to smile every day you spread your sunshine by posting a video. We love you Miss Tony, and I love you too. To Miss Sandy. Thanks for checking out my videos. I really, really appreciate it. Now, if you enjoy my channel and want to support TO Yarn Crafts, buy me a coffee, or in this case, a water, and I might shout you out my next video. Now, let's talk metal Tunisian crochet hooks from Sorella. Now, when you get right down to it, having access to metal tools as a crocheter is pretty much a given. We get metal hooks from Susan Bates, from Clover, from Boy, whatever hook shape you like, you can typically find a metal crochet hook that works for you. Now, with that being the case and metal crochet hooks being the standard, why isn't that the case when it comes to Tunisian crochet? I have searched high and low for ages for a really good set of metal Tunisian crochet hooks and I keep coming up short. Now I do have to give some props and love to Addy who have their Addy Click Tunisian crochet hook set but my frustration there is that the larger sizes which some might argue are the most used sizes are still plastic and also the Addies have a very recognizable tapered shape and as an inline user myself they're not really usable for me. So I was still on the hunt still super frustrated I remember talking about this back in I think December that why isn't there just a good set of metal Tunisian crochet hooks out there and then enter Sorella now she already has a set of metal knitting needles as well as a set of metal crochet hooks and I guess she decided a set of metal Tunisian crochet hooks is gonna round out the trio now some time ago Ashley from Sorella reached out and asked what I would ideally want in a set of Tunisian crochet hooks I said I need inline I said I need a thumb rest I said I need an engraved or embossed size on the hook so it wouldn't wear off I said I needed a really smooth join between the hook and the cord because if my loops get stuck I'm not using that tool again. What I tried to communicate to Ashley is that we as crocheters want a balance between luxury and function. We want something that looks good but also works well. If you want me to reach for a set of hooks over and over and over again those two things need to be in harmony. Now after I was done with that conversation with Ashley I had no idea what the timeline was for anything she might have in development. I was just hoping that that feedback didn't fall on deaf ears. I 
shouldn't have been worried at all because the product she came out with was pretty darn stellar and matched just about everything I asked for. Now my sample set here arrived to me in early January and I was able to test these out and share my feedback through a series of Instagram stories. P.S. If you're not following me on Instagram, you're really only getting half the story, so get to it, okay? Now the first public drop of these hooks I think was around January 11th and they sold out within minutes. She followed up with another drop the following week and again, these hooks completely sold out. Now they haven't been available since then, but I thought I would come and do this review so that when they do come available again, you can make an informed decision of whether or not these hooks are a good fit for you. So at this point, I'm sure you're like, what is even the big deal? So let's go ahead and get these open. I'm gonna show you what's inside and we'll do some practice stitching. So the first feature, of course, is this gorgeous case. According to the Sorella website, this case is inspired by the blush gingham wallpaper inside her craft room. And it surely is gorgeous. It's got kind of this linen texture to it. My biggest challenge with this, obviously, is that it gets a little bit dirty. It literally picks up dirt like a magnet, as well as cat hair. So it might be a little tricky to see here, but it definitely doesn't look exactly like it did when I first took it out of the package. But it's still super duper pretty. So when we open it up with this really nice zipper, if you care about those kinds of things. We find that we have nine hooks as well as some cores, some keys, some connectors, and some stoppers. First off are these really gorgeous warm gold kind of pinky blush hooks that have this nice matte coating on them. They range in sizes from three and a half millimeter, 3.75 millimeter, four millimeter, four and a half, five, five and a half, six, six and a half, and then eight millimeter is the largest size. So let's take a closer look at the hooks themselves. I'm gonna pull out the eight millimeter and kind of walk you through the features. At the tip here, you have this gorgeous inline hook head. It's got this nice rounded tip, so it's not too pointy. And then as we travel down, we've got the thumb rest. This is definitely a new feature when it comes to Tunisian crochet hooks. You don't find this much, and honestly, I've never found a set with a thumb rest quite like this. The only other set that I have at all that has a thumb rest is the Denise's and we're going to compare these to the Denise a little bit later in this video so you'll get to see the real differences. In the thumb rest you have the embossed size so it falls right underneath your thumb and I know one of your questions is going to be does this get in the way? Don't worry we're going to talk a little bit more about that but in addition to it being embossed here on the other side you have the US size as well as the number so you have a couple different ways to identify the size of your hooks. As you move further down we've got a nice full handle here and then it tapers down to where the cord is going to connect the screws that the cord goes into are here inside the base of the hook. Now one thing that's super important to me, especially when it comes to Tunisian crochet hooks, is the length of the hook. I need something that is gonna rest nicely across my palm. I have pretty big hands, I've mentioned this before, so I need longer hooks. Now let's talk about the length of these hooks. From the very tip to the very base, we're looking at about six inches, and that feels like a really great length. If I hold this in my hand, you can see that it's nice and large. It goes across my entire palm all the way out the other side, and that makes it a very comfortable use for me. Let's get into some of the other accessories that come with this set. You're gonna get three different cords and the sizes are 20 inch, 38 inch, and 46 inch. That's a really good range of sizes because you're gonna get your shorter cables for things like scarves or hats, your medium sized cable maybe for a shawl or a bigger scarf, and then your longer cable, which will be great for a blanket. When we're looking at the cables, we can see that we've got gold tips on either side and this beautiful clear plastic cable. Now clearly this is plastic like many of the other Knitter's Pride cords. If you've had any experience with plastic cords already, you know that they're going to have their own memory. Dip these in a little bit of warm water and it definitely helps them to loosen up, but they are gonna be quite stiff right out of the package. They are very pretty, so Sorella definitely gets points for that. I mean, if anything, she's gonna serve on the aesthetics. We all know this. In addition to the cords, you're going to get a couple of keys. So the key looks just like this, and we're gonna put a hook together shortly, so I'll show you exactly how that key works. You're also going to get several stoppers, and these stoppers go on the end of the actual cord to make sure that as your 
loops travel onto that cord. They don't fall off of the back. And last but not least, you're going to get two cord connectors. Now what the cord connectors do is allow you to put multiple cords together. So if you were gonna make something even bigger than a blanket, you could attach your two largest cords together and that's gonna give you a lot of opportunity to make a very wide project. I also find that the brass finish on these cord connectors matches the hooks. So that's a really nice touch. I think there's a general attention to detail that makes this hook set so appealing. I mean, even the format of the inside of this hook case is really quite beautiful. So you're getting these two pink zippers, this nice cream felt on the backing. You have these nice blush gold accents, not only in the hooks, but also on the tips of the cords as well as the connectors. The whole thing screams Sorella. She's great with the branding. She even put her label right there on the front just so you can never mistake a Sorella set of hooks with anybody else's hooks. Now let's put it all together and see how well they actually work. I'm going to pull the five millimeter crochet hook as well as one of my cords. Now I did misplace one of my cords. I don't know where it went. So I'm gonna pull what I believe is my 46 inch cord. I'm also going to grab a stopper and a key so I can put everything together. First off, I'm gonna open up my cord. So you can see that my cord has an Audi. Here's the little screw. And I'm gonna put that into the base of my hook. And then I can use this thumb rest to help me as I screw this in. And tighten it the rest of the way. I should only have to turn this maybe a quarter turn max. See, it's already pretty tight, but that key tightening is going to make sure that the cable does not come out of the back end of my hook. And then the last step here is to take the stopper and put that on the end of the cord as well. And then I'll need to tighten this with the key. There we go. I have been using these hooks over the last several weeks. I wanted to get some good time in with them before I really gave you my thoughts. One of which is my cadenza wrap that I'm making for my crochet along, the make it crochet along. So this is what it looks like so far. And I have worked this entire project with my metal Sorella Tunisian crochet hooks. It's working up really beautifully. I'm getting really nice, even tension so far. And I mean, the stretchiness and the wonderful feel of the fabric, I know a lot of that has to do with the tool. I'm going to take out my stitch marker and I'm ready to change colors. So I'm going to insert my hooks back in here just like this. Move that cream out of the way. I'm going to get my color and I wanted to show you these hooks on a larger project so you can see how things look as the loops start to go onto the cord as well. Now, one thing to note about the Sorella cords, and I know a lot of people have this question, no, they are not swivel cords. I have a lot of feelings about that. <laughs> A lot of feelings about that. We're gonna get into it shortly, but let's just demo what we have so far. And now I can pull through these last two loops to change my color. Simple one, then I have my back bar increase. And for this color, I just get to simple stitch across. Now you'll notice that my thumb instinctively goes to the thumb rest. And it's one of the reasons that I wanted a thumb rest so badly is because you really do have to orient your hook as you're working Tunisian crochet. So I'm really grateful to have this thumb rest here. It really did make the difference I always hoped it would. The yarn is going really smoothly over my hook. And you'll notice that I can keep relatively loose tension here because this merino wool and the nice matte finish on this hook are playing really well together. So as the loops continue down, of course, they're going to cover my thumb rest, but I can still keep my finger here and I just adjust as I end up with too many loops. So let's see, we'll do a few more loops here. And then I just open my hand and slightly push the loops down and then continue with the project. So this is the simple stitch on the forward pass with merino wool, fingering weight merino wool and a five millimeter hook. So let me show you what the return pass ends up looking like. So I'm going to slightly scooch my loops 
up my hook. And what's nice is that since we have a very smooth join here between the hook and the cord, I'm getting no catching. Nothing is getting stuck here along this connection. And also you'll notice that the embossing on the thumb rest doesn't pose an issue as well. All of the loops are able to move up and down that hook, no problem. Now let me be very clear. One thing that I found out about myself is that my Tunisian crochet tension tends to be quite loose. If you've ever made one of my Tunisian crochet patterns and tried to match my gauge, you might notice that you either have to go up your hook sizes or you have to adjust the way that your yarn is feeding into the project. Both of those things are going to encourage your tension to loosen or soften a little bit. Softer tension also leads to less issues within your hands, wrists, elbows when you're doing Tunisian crochet. So if you find that you're having cramping, you definitely need to soften up your tension. Let's move on to the return pass with these hooks. So I'm going to just push my loops up because that's how I like to start my return passes. I'll then chain one, yarn over, pull through two, two, and two. What I love about the return pass with these hooks is because they are so smooth, I can go really quickly on my return pass. There we go. Now, as you can tell, my general experience with these metal Tunisian crochet hooks is generally positive, but now's the point where we're gonna dive into all of your questions to make sure that these could be a good fit for you as well. You all asked a lot of questions when it came to these hooks, and I broke them down into four major categories. The first group is gonna be the hooks themselves. Second group is gonna be the case and accessories. Third group is usability and value. And the fourth group is just a couple general questions that didn't fall into any other category. So let's start off by analyzing the hooks themselves and specifically you wanted me to analyze these hooks in comparison to some of the other hooks that I've mentioned here on my channel. So I grabbed a few of my other favorite hooks. I have the Clover set, I have the Lantern Moon set, and I have my Classic Denise set. Now one of the first questions I got was how heavy these hooks are, which makes sense if you're going from something like wood or plastic, which is generally pretty light, you might expect that metal is quite heavy. So I'm going to get five millimeter hooks from each of these sets and compare the weights. All right, so I have hooks from each of the sets and I'm just gonna put my kitchen scale here. We're just gonna tear this out, get it over to grams because that's gonna be most accurate. And we're gonna start off with our lantern moon here. And this is coming in at four grams. So very light and I'll just stack them up here in order to wait. So that was lantern moon at four grams. This one here is clover. This one is actually three grams, so even a little bit lighter, which makes sense because the clover is made from bamboo. And then this lantern moon is that nice ebony wood, which is a little bit heavier. Next, we'll go with the Denise. Now this one is plastic Ooh. and is hitting at three grams as well. So the same weight as our clover. Last but not least, our Sorella hook. And let's see how heavy this is. This one is just seven grams. So by and large, you're looking at the difference between a few grams. And my guess is if you do traditional crochet as well, you've got hooks that are way heavier than seven grams. This difference in weight is not going to make much of a difference in your crochet practice. The next question I got was about the length of all of our hooks. So let's measure these five millimeter hooks. Now we've already measured the Sorella hook. That one's coming in at just about six inches. And then looking at the Lantern Moon, that one's just about the same length and side by side you can see that they're pretty close that lantern moon's just slightly longer here comes the clover that one's actually quite a bit longer than the six inches but you'll notice that a lot of that extra length is from the screw itself but the actual usable length of it is just over six inches and if we put that next to the sorella and the lantern moon you can see that they are about the same but they are just slightly longer Last but not least is the Denise's, which 
One of our frustrations with these hooks is that they're so short. They're just over four and a half inches. And if we put this one next to the Sorella hook, you can see that we get a lot more real estate in all of these others. Now, as it goes, compared to all of these other hooks, the Sorella hook is on the shorter side, but it's not a short hook. Six inches is about standard for most hooks, whether that's Tunisian crochet or traditional crochet. So you're not getting shortchanged here. The next question that you asked was about the hook head shape. So let's zoom in a little bit closer so we can examine that. So if we look at these all from the side, you'll notice that some of our hooks have a little bit more of a curve at the throat of the hook, whereas our clover hook really just kind of hits at that sharp angle. Our Sorella hook and our lantern wounds, as well as our Denise's, shift slightly up and then curve around to the actual nub here on our hook. Looking here at the tip of the hook, each of the tips is slightly different. Our clovers is definitely the pointiest and has the shallowest hook head. Our lantern moons are kind of an ideal shape in that they have a nice kind of soft rounded point at the top and the hook itself is just long enough to be able to catch the yarn. The Sorella hook heads have a very similar shape but they're even longer here along the front of the hook and they do still have that nice rounded tip. The Denise's have the deepest throat that I've seen of Tunisian crochet hooks. So if you ever have trouble catching the yarn in the throat of your hook, the Denise's are probably a good fit. Now looking at the front of the hooks is really where we get to determine if these are in line, tapered or hybrid. Looking at the Sorella hook, this is a plainly inline hook. This area here is completely flat and this angle here between the throat of the hook all the way up to the tip is the same shape. There's no rounding or buffing here. It's just a nice little drop off. Whereas the Lantern Moons are a little bit smoother here. It's a nice rounded shape coming from the neck all the way up to the tip of the hook. So that's why those are considered hybrid hooks. If we look at our clover hook, this one is a little bit more similar to the Sorella hook and that is a full inline shape. Same thing with our Denise hooks here. So with our Sorella hooks, we are looking at an inline shape just to make that very, very clear. Whereas with the Lantern Moons, we've got a hybrid. And then if you have the Addies, those are a tapered shape. Now the next question I got, which I'm surprised I didn't hear more often, is what are the thoughts on the thumb rest? Does it get in the way or does it adjust your tension? Does it adjust the size of your stitches and your general gauge? Well, the answer is kind of yes, but also kind of no. If we take a look at the hook itself, we can see that we get a little widening here at the thumb rest area. Now, generally it's gonna be the same circumference, so we don't have to worry about this area not being five millimeters. But when you have this little hump here, you may find that there's a little bit of resistance getting them over that hump. You're gonna see that issue if you have a tighter tension. What I would recommend is going up on your hook size or softening the tension of the yarn that's feeding from the ball. If you can achieve that softer tension in a way that's comfortable for you to crochet, that thumb rest shouldn't get in the way at all. Kind of piggy backing off that as well, we've got this engraving on the thumb. What I thought was gonna be a hindrance actually turned out to be something that helped me because having that bit of texture under my thumb helped me reorient my thumb without having to move my hand around too much. So does the thumb rest or the engraving get in the way of crocheting? Not necessarily. So let's move on to the next section of questions, which is the case and accessories. The first question that I got a whole, whole lot was do the cords swivel? No, Unfortunately, the cords don't swivel, but you can use other cords with this set. Now, I've been using the Mindful Collection cords, which are from Knitter's Pride, which is the same company that manufactured these. You can also use the swivel cords that come from Lantern Moon. Now, Lantern Moon, if I'm not mistaken, was purchased by Knitter's Pride, so it makes sense that their cords also work with other Knitter's Pride products. Now, when it comes to swivel cords, I feel like it's a product that you have to try to truly understand, but the moment you do, you're you're like, oh my gosh, why didn't I do this ages ago? A swivel cord on a Tunisian crochet hook adds a weightlessness. It removes that tension of the cord trying to go one way while you and your hook are trying to go a different way. I'll include links to those mindful cords as well as the lantern moon cords down in the description so you can give them a try yourself. Another question that I got is can you make these double ended hooks? And the answer is yes, I'm gonna show you right now. So I'm going to need a cable and I'll need to remove this stopper and I'm going to put a hook on one end 
as well as a hook on the other end. Now, ideally you would have a hook of the same size, but you could go down about a half a millimeter for your return pass hook and it'll still work just fine. And now I have a setup for double-ended crochet. So whether that's flat panels or if you wanted to work in the round, you absolutely could make your Sorella interchangeable hooks, double-ended hooks. Another really interesting question came up. Somebody asked, is the Sorella case honestly the best way to carry these around? Potentially, yes. It looks great. This is how it comes. You wouldn't have to buy any more products. But if you wanted something that's stored a little bit easier, I would look into a soft pencil case. Let's move on to some questions around usability and value. One of the questions that I got was, do I experience any squeaking or hand fatigue with these hooks? I did not experience any squeaking or hand fatigue. These hooks are incredibly smooth. They have a nice matte finish on them. That reminds me a lot of my Clover Amore or my Clover Soft Touch hooks. So I don't have any of that weird tensioning that'll cause the hooks to squeak. The next question around usability is, do these work with different fibers? And I figured the only way to answer that would be to test them out. So so I went into my stash and I found some cotton, some wool, and some acrylic. Let's do a couple little test swatches. I'm gonna grab my cotton first. So the cotton's coming along swimmingly so far. I'm able to catch these loops just fine. The yarn is sliding right over my hook. Nothing's catching, there's no squeaking. The only sound I'm hearing is my cord hitting itself. Yeah, I would say uh, no problems here. Sorella Tunisian Crochet metal hooks work just fine with cotton. So now let's switch out for wool. Now I've been working with Superwash Merino wool with these hooks, not this weight. This one's a little bit thicker than the fingering weight I've been working with. But I do know for sure that Merino wool loves these hooks. Merino wool. Hard yes, and now let's try out our acrylic. So for acrylic, I'm finding I might need to tighten my tension a little bit. I'm getting a little too much glide between the hook and the yarn, but I was able to figure that out really quick and I make this just minor adjustment and now it's off to the races. Now what's nice about metal crochet hooks and why I generally prefer them over any other material is because they work great with just about every fiber, especially when you find a hook that has this nice kind of brushed matte finish to it. So your Clover Amores, your Clover Soft Touches. So we're on our third row here. And I mean, it's looking good. I'm keeping even tension, nice smooth stitching. So cotton, wool, and acrylic all work great with these hooks. Now another question I got a lot was, are these hooks good for beginners? And I'm gonna say right out of the gate, probably not. The price point on these hooks is just way too high for anything that I would recommend for a beginner. Are these hooks fantastic? Yes. Will you probably love them? Sure. But if you're not fully committed to Tunisian crochet as a craft that you want to keep in your life, I would not recommend investing this much in a set of tools. There are hook sets and individual hooks out there that are great for you to practice with while you're deciding if this is a long-term situation for you. And the last question in this section was, what is the join like between the cord and the hook. So if we take a closer look here, we can see that this join is incredibly smooth. So this is the hook. You can see kind of that matte finish stops here. And then we have the shinier finish of the tips of the cords. There is zero 
drag here. Your loops should be able to run smoothly at this point. And in my experience, they absolutely do. Now we'll get into the last group of questions, which was just everything that was left that I thought was important to answer. First question is, will these hooks be sold individually? Now, I don't claim to be a master on all things Sorella. I have no idea how she decides to run her business, but my guess is she probably won't sell these individually. Economically, it probably makes sense to get these in sets and sell them with the case and all the other accessories. So that's just a guess, but I wouldn't hold my breath for individual metal Tunisian crochet hooks from Sorella. Another question I got is, would this set be good for traveling? And my answer is 100% yes. I think this case makes this set really great for traveling. It zips up completely, so you never have to worry about anything falling out of it. It's also pretty low profile, not much thicker than just a book. So you can slide it into your carry-on or into your checked luggage, and you'll know that it's not gonna take up space from all the other precious things that you're traveling with. So that's all for you all's questions. So it's my turn to give my two cents, and I'm gonna try my best to keep things balanced. I have pros and cons for these hooks. And the first pro is the aesthetics of these hooks. I love a cohesive color palette. I adore all the attention to detail. Gold and pink are two of my favorite colors, so you knew I was gonna be all over this. We eat with our eyes first, and I find in my crochet practice, if I like what I'm looking at, I'm more likely to do it more often. So if I enjoy my tools, they work well and they look good, I'm likely to sit down with those tools more often and choose those over the other tools in my stash. Another pro when it comes to these hooks is I feel like Sorella really did some innovation when it comes to the whole Tunisian crochet hook game. We have been begging for metal Tunisian crochet hooks for such a long time, and while Addy made a valiant effort, I feel like they dropped the ball. So then the Sorella folks came in and they gave us the hook head we've been asking for, they gave us the material we've been asking for, they gave us the thumb rest, and yeah, they didn't give us swivel cords, but you know what? I've got some in my stash that I can use. So while these hooks aren't perfect, I think they are leaps and bounds better than some of the options that are available to us in the market right now. And another pro to these hooks is that they really mimic all of the things that I love about a traditional crochet process. You've got the smoothness of the hook. You have this really nice point on it so I can scoop my stitches really easily. You've got a deep enough throat so I know that I'm gonna grab my yarn without fail every single time. These hooks are a natural fit to my personal crochet style with my looser tension and just the way that I push my hook through my work. Now for every pro, there's gotta be a con, and the first con is going to be the price. So this is the point in the story where I break it to you that these Tunisian crochet hooks cost $180. Now don't get too much sticker shock, okay? When you think about the Tunisian crochet hooks that are currently on the market, they're ranging in price between $100 and about $160. So $180 isn't outside of the realm of possibility, but $180 is still a lot of money. Now that's gonna be prohibitive to a lot of people, folks on a fixed income, people who just don't have a lot of cash to throw out their hobbies, and I definitely would not recommend that a beginner spend $180 on tools for a craft that they're not committed to yet. So that amount of money is definitely a concern, but I don't expect that the price of these is gonna go down anytime soon. So if you are interested in these hooks, you just kinda have to reconcile yourself with the fact that these are pricey, but kind of worth it. Another con in my eyes are the hook sizes that are available in this set. Now if I open this up and take another quick look, we can see that our hook sizes start at three and a half millimeter. Now the smallest yarn that I typically use is a fingering weight and I use a five millimeter Tunisian crochet hook with my fingering weight yarns consistently. So there are pretty much no circumstances where I'd ever need a three and a half a 3.75 or even a four millimeter Tunisian crochet hook. Four and a half millimeter I get if I wanted a slightly tighter tension on my fingering weight yarn, I could go down to four and a half millimeter, but essentially for $180, I've got $60 worth of hooks that I will probably never use. Now, if it was up to me and you were gonna put nine sizes in a Tunisian crochet hook set, here would be my recommendation. Four and a half, five, five and a half, six, six and a half, seven, eight, nine, mm, eight, 10 and 11 and a half. 
those would be the nine sizes I'd ideally love to see in a Tunisian crochet hook set, but I definitely get that those larger sizes are gonna be more expensive to manufacture. But in all honesty, if you gave me all the sizes that I needed, I'd probably pay even more than $180 for them because it'd be damn near perfect. Now, last but not least, as far as my negative thoughts around these hooks is the fact that they don't include swivel cords. Now for $180 for the set, just about $20 per hook, I very much expected there to be swivel cords in here. I know Knitter's Prize makes them and they could easily have made swivel cords with those nice gold tips. I think about my Clover set right here, these come with swivel cords and you don't need a key to tighten them. So if they can figure out how to put swivel cords into their product and keep the price relatively reasonable, it seems like something the Sorella team should have been able to do. Now I don't know if that's something that they considered at the time or maybe it would have pushed the price point even higher, but as a consumer, it's kind of something that I expected and I was really, really surprised when that wasn't the case. So with all that being said, what is my final rating for these hooks? I am going to give them a strong eight out of 10. I do believe that this hook set is well on its way to being the absolute perfect end all be all. You only need one set of Tunisian crochet hooks in your stash, but they're not there quite yet. These hooks would be perfect with a few little tweaks, but ultimately I am loving them so far. I've been using them with my mindful cords from Knitter's Pride and it's made my Tunisian crochet practice more enjoyable by leaps and bounds. While I still very much love and will continue to use my wooden Tunisian crochet hooks, this is going to be the set that I reach for over and over again. Now, if you are interested in these Tunisian crochet hooks, you're gonna have to be a bit patient. They've been sold out since the second time that they were released back in mid-January, and Sorella's being pretty hush-hush about when we might see them in her shop again. Now, if you want to know when they're back available, you can click on the product link to be notified when they're back in stock, but I would almost recommend that you either follow Sorella on Instagram or sign up for their newsletter list to know a little bit further ahead of time when the hooks are back. Now I had a lot of fun with this review. You can definitely expect to see more of these metal Tunisian crochet hooks over on my Instagram feed as I continue to work up my temperature blanket and other designs throughout the year. Now I would love to know what you think about these Tunisian crochet hooks. Did you get full on sticker shock when I said $180? Or do you think that all the special bells and whistles really balance out the expense? Drop down in the comments and fill me in. Also let me know what yarns and hooks you would like to see this yarn snob review. You, I'm always so grateful for your recommendations. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time. Bye. <laughs>